Hey guys, in this video lecture, what I'd like to do is go over tying in and then I would like to demonstrate it for you so you can really see it. Now, what happens is you're, you're welding along and you run out of rod. Well, sometimes that weld needs to continue on further than you can actually weld a welding rod. Typically a welding rod will weld around six, maybe seven inches, depending on the size or what type of joint you're trying to weld. So we have two options for tying into a weld. And you can see I've drawn a couple here up on the board. So here's a weld that is coming in and is stopping, and here's a new one that was started right here and is welded on. So the two options that we have are we can pick up this crater and continue welding, or if depending on what type of joint we have, we can start from behind the previous weld, weld up to it, and then tie into the back. Now, the most popular style will be to start at the crater and move forward. But if you're a pipe welder and some of the projects we're going to be doing, specifically that pipe to plate project, you can go ahead and start from behind and then weld up to it and tie in. I think specifically there's going to be on a route pass, you could do two tie-ins this way and then the third one you would have to tie in this way. So let me break that down a little bit better for you. What we're going to do is over here we're going to strike up and we're going to move back to the crater. We're going to do a little like a like a six kind of motion. We're going to kind of do a sideways six, I should say. We're going to start at the top, swoop in, go to the center, and then let the puddle fill up and travel forward. So if, it, if we were to strike up, and this red line will be my movement, we're going to strike up here, bring it back, do a swooping motion around the outside, bring it up to the center, let it fill for up, maybe a half second, and then start traveling forward with a completed weld puddle. And then on out. We're gonna to try to, one, not be striking up outside of the area we're gonna weld. Because what's gonna happen is you're gonna move from here to here very quickly. That way we don't deposit any weld metal or as little as we possibly can. That way we can go ahead and cover it back up. We don't want to be striking up outside of that weld zone because that's considered a stress riser. Now if we were going to weld up to this previous weld, we're going to start back here. We're going to come into it and we're just going to weld. And you got to realize there's going to be a weld on the outside of this. Coming up. We're going to go up, up to the point of the weld. Continue past it about three eighths of an inch. Pause. Let the weld puddle kind of envelop this whole area and then and let it fill up a little bit and then stop. So what I'd like to do now is I would like to go out into the shop and actually demonstrate these for you. Most of them are just gonna be arc shots because you're not gonna be really able to see that motion from a broader view, okay? So let's go ahead and start looking at that stuff. So I got a couple beads here that we're gonna go ahead and try to tie into. So let's go ahead and get that started. Okay, so I struck up on the edge of the plate, and here I'm going to start moving towards the puddle very quickly. I do my hook, come back to the center, wait a half second, and start moving. Notice that I'm welding over my previous tracks, so that way I end up with a nice clean weld. Okay, so we got our tie in here. You can see it's not perfect, but there's no dip where it comes together, and I was able to continue the weld on. So let's go ahead and let's see one on a T-joint. Here's our T-joint we're gonna go ahead and tie into. Notice that when I start, I'm gonna start up on the very edge, come in, pick up the weld, and then continue on out. Let's go ahead and weld it. Like I said, I'm gonna start up on the edge of the plate, move in, do my hook, and then go ahead and continue on welding that bead. One very important thing to notice is that as I'm leaving that crater, I'm going pretty slow. That way I can let that puddle fill in. So here's that weld. You can see it's still not a perfect tie-in, but it's pretty dang good. Went ahead and continued it on. Let's go ahead and move on to the last style. So here's the stringer bead that I found on the table. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start over here, gonna weld up to this puddle, gonna let it fill in and stop. As you can see, I'm not doing anything special for this one. I'm pretty much just welding up on top of the other bead and then letting it fill in, pausing for a half second. So this is that third and final tie-in. You can see, you can barely see that crater. You can see that it's no, no real dip inside here. 
Like I said, this one's really good if you're going to be doing pipe welding where you're going to be can weld back to your weld. All right, so that's the completion of our video. One thing I did want to say is uh, this is a very difficult process tying in. It'll take you years to get good at it. I still, I mean, I've been doing this for about 11 years now, and I still have a couple mess ups and they're still not perfect. So just keep get in there, do the best you can and just practice, practice, practice. Um, otherwise, if you guys need me to demo this, please let me know.